A2. Blease has been producing a bunch of great AUV3 effects on iOS for a while now, and now they are bringing their similar design philosophy to a AUV3 synth. And the, the thing that makes Blease apps a lot of fun to play with is they pack a lot of features into a very tight package, like just amazing amount of stuff in a very small space. And they've given themselves a lot of extra space in alpha, which uh, just has a whole bunch of different pages, but it's still got that same... Um, quality of like density here where man, you're going to see as I'm playing with this, you change one thing and you want to immediately go over to one of the other pages and start playing with something else. That you, now you want to hear how your changes have affected the other things. Like it's, it's just a lot of fun to bounce around in. I'm going to uh, have a lot of fun showing it off to you. I've got a, a simple little pattern playing from Fugue. And the oscillators here can all be uh, morphed between uh, you know, we got like a sign here that's coming up into uh, like a screwed up saw, and you get some crunchy goodness here. Let me mix this. So we're only hearing the first oscillator right now. Now I'm going to be trying to produce a very analog sound. I think a lot of the uh, presets sound very digital and it's capable of making a uh, nice rich warm analog sound so that's what I'm going to be working on um you might expect me to be going for one of these like something in this area where it's got that crunchy gritty center but I'm actually going to keep it fairly clean like I'm going for this this smooth saw okay and now on this second last letter here I'm going to start off by dropping it down an octave here, and I'm going to put it up into basically the same area. But on this one, this lower octave one, I'm going to just tune down uh, or morph down a little bit. So up here we got the clean sound. Actually, I should be using the mouse to show you this. Uh, Here are we start to get into some just a little bit of grit. Like I'm not looking for anything weird. Like these are kind of weird. All right, all right. I'll stop screwing around with that. I, I finally found just a little bit of grit. So we can mix these two together using this uh, knob over here. And I want to show you the third oscillator, uh, but first we need we need to jump into the filter because this is an annoying sound that's playing in your ears. So <laughs> just gonna find something that's suitable for right now. All right, that's reasonable. Uh, give this kind of a Alright, so it's calmer. I wanted to have some character and, and like some of that grit still in there, which is coming through now is that, that squeaky sound. Like we're, we're going to make this sound better, I promise, but I want to have some of that squeaky weirdness as we go into the uh, effects section now uh, so I can show you the drive and how it's going to impact things here. So obviously you can just pump that up and uh, we got all that right there. Uh, but if we uh, look up in the top right of the uh, effect here, we've got these low and a high, so we could pump up the low, or, as I'm going to do, I'm going to use this as basically like an EQ I'm abusing, uh, by dropping the high. And did you hear how that made a, a, a difference there? Where we've, we've, We do have some gain here. I'll, I'll boost the gain so you can really hear this. So now you get the... It's like a really annoying high frequency thing that's getting in there. And now all the high frequency stuff is just calmed a little bit. And mixing this up reduces that high even more. So let's reduce the gain now because we don't need it to be that insanely driven. Uh, I'm going to skip the crusher and tremolo. My husband's working from home today. Uh, and we're gonna jump into the delay. So 
this is another thing that can be heavily abused. Uh, I'm gonna take the time way down. And give it a bunch of feedback. Um, I'm gonna mix it up 100% so we can hear what's happening as I uh, use the low pass and high pass here to try to find the areas that I want to be tweaking. I'm trying to grab that. I'm trying to think how to describe this. There's something that that center that I want to really focus on and All right, I think I'm grabbing it there. I promise that this is all going to start sounding really good in just a second. Uh, I wanted to show off the, the effects with a very simple thing go happening. So now here we've got the uh, reverb, and this is what the reverb is hearing. And we can do a low cut on this. Because you don't want too much of the low end. You usually don't want too much of the low end going into the reverb. And uh, we can change the length so it's not giving us that huge trail. Like, we don't want that. And there's also a pre-delay here, so we can actually have two different delay times. And I'm trying to get this to be about twice what this is. All right, that's that's it for now. Let's let's actually start to make this sound better. Uh, throw the stereo, or for oscillator one, just way up and kind of mix two to taste. And now this third oscillator, let me change this to a square so you'll definitely hear it as it comes in and drop that a couple of octaves because of course I do. Uh, listen to how things change as I mix this in. So here it is at 50%, but at 100% it's completely mixing out oscillator one and two. And you can hear how that's running through the effects now. Like I'm getting that that uh, kind of laser bassy sound. Like I promise you, I'm still going for an analog sound, but uh, I, I really like that sound that we've got there, and I think that's uh, amusing. So we're gonna try to make this all sound good and thick and analog by using this behavior of the oscillator threes uh, mixing in to mix out. Oscillator 1 and 2. So, uh, there's a lot of different ways to modulate things in here. We've got two LFOs and an envelope that we can also use to modulate things. So, if I take the first LFO and I'm setting it to be beat synced, and I'm taking it down to one sine wave rotation for every four bars, and pointing this now at the. Shit. Well, work, mouse wheel. Ah, oh, goddammit. Uh, the oscillator 3 level. Let me go back to the oscillators here and. That filter's kind of bugging me. It's also a pre-drive on this, which is kind of amusing. All right. So I'm listening for that oscillator 3 to do this. Because right now there's the LFO pushing it up. That's not going up high enough. Oh, there it goes. Okay. You can actually watch the wave here today. Here it's gonna be coming in. So now it's it's completely out. And now it's it's getting into that that interesting territory. We can further screw with this. Um because I want to have it varying and evolving, but also still staying within um a a structured sort of rhythmic sort of thing with the the beat. So let me uh turn this envelope down to like nothingness um, and assign this now to 
the oscillator three level, but instead of pushing this up, I'm maybe using this to push it down. And let's hear how this affects things. open up the filter a little bit more with the uh, envelope that's controlling that. I'm going to push that too high. So this really, really stupid pattern that I've got playing in the background now is it sounds like it's evolving. Like it sounds like I'm changing things up, but I'm not actually touching anything now that that Oscillator 3 mix-in knob has a really dramatic effect on the sound, so just gently playing with that over time is having a really big impact on things, and having this persistent modulation with the envelope here See, that's super boring And we're just adding a little bit of a a ramp up with a down, so it's 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 doing this kind of peak slope thing that it's showing here. It's just adding a little bit of something there, where it's pushing that down and back to wherever the LFO and uh, this knob have it set at. Maybe we can actually push that up a little bit. I'm gonna go back now into the filters to try to refine the sound. So. Um, each of the filters has four different modes. There's low pass, high pass, peak, and um, band reject. Um, I'm going to be using the uh, high pass here. And you hear how they're, they're running in series. So whatever's going on in the second one is, is what you're going to be hearing if you've got both of these on. So trying to... Think about how I want to be playing with this one. I'm right now just really pushing that resonance so I can hear the different frequencies and find a, a kind of a sweet spot that I'll kind of tweak with later. All right, I like that. But I don't, I obviously don't want it to be stuck here because now it's, it's completely losing all the low end, right? So. That was around 600 hertz that we, we found this. Now we can try to push this down using the same envelope that's affecting filter one. And in this case, that's pushing it up to let more high end in. And here we're doing the opposite, where we're like really pushing it down, letting in more of the lows during whatever this decay is. I feel like I've pushed that too far. Like even with the long decay there, it was a little aggressively hard on the low end. You see it when I'm pushing it up with the, the residents here, it's a really good like way to really hear what's going on at different specific frequencies. I'm really like just amazed at how good that sounded. So I'm leaving it there for a second here to listen to it. Now it is getting a little bit too digital sounding. Um, I'm going to try now to uh, play around with the pre drive on the second filter. That sounds like it's just freaking right out. Uh, that actually gives me an idea. All right, well, well, we'll leave that there for now. Uh, let's modulate some more stuff. Um, one thing that uh, old analog gear tended to have was like 
maybe one of the oscillators will start to detune or just glitch out. Let's try to simulate that in modulation here, uh, where I'm gonna uh, take uh, this second LFO. Again, I'm gonna beat sync it because I want it to be uh, in time with whatever our tempo is. In this case, it's 110. Um, and I'm gonna put this at oscillator two's pulse width. And, well, you could really hear the, the difference that immediately started to have. That might be too much. Um, And I want to modulate the rate of this using this uh, envelope here. So I can do that. It's, there aren't a ton of different modulation destinations, but there are a bunch that you can make use of. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna take the sync rate here and uh, kind of screw with that on a envelope basis now. So every time a note is hit, it's it's pushing that LFO rate up and then down over the course of uh, 600 or 700 milliseconds here. That's a little bit too much of that. Like I'm not looking for a, a crazy effect. I'm just looking for a kind of a natural, oh wow, that oscillator is kind of going bad sound. It's still sounding a little aggressive, but I'm liking it. <laughs> what if we try? Hmm. Let's try uh, screwing with the pitch, too. Uh, no, I don't want that. I'm looking for, like, 1%. Aw, oh, damn it. Yay, I can use the mouse to do this. Just listening to how this sounds if I change the wave now to be a cleaner like the uh, first one. Yeah, it's a lot less aggressively weird. All right, right there, I'm getting some really, really nice sounding stuff. Um, let me mix back in one, go back into the filters here. Hmm. I kind of want to pre-drive this, but I feel like that's just going to be too much growly stuff. Because right now I'm trying to be very careful about where I'm putting the growl. Like I've got this on the only on the high because in our our like master mix here, I've got a lot of the highs being pulled out. So it's it's not going to be too aggressively crunching the high, hopefully. if we take the very low down I don't know where this EQ shelf is so I'm just gonna leave that as is I mean I guess I could test here yeah I feel like that's getting too much mid wow that is really freaking out Sounding better here. Um, let me hear where our delay is at. Is it still in that sweet spot in the center? All right, that is sounding really good now. Check this. I don't know if I want that 
growl here in the reverb. Yeah, I think the lowest I can go with this is around three. Yeah, like 300 is pretty good. All right, pulling that down now. Mix it in. This really did sound best at 50. All right. Um, there's another modulation thing here that I haven't uh, played with. Uh, in fact, there's a few. <laughs> um, let me send... Now let's send this at the filters. Like we've got this really, really slow LFO, and that might do some interesting things with the um, the cutoff. Uh, let's try the first or the second one first. Let's give it some resonance to. Ooh. I really like how that decay is having such a big impact on the sound there. All right, uh, I'm gonna leave that one as is. Uh, let me now uh, show you the motion sequencer by screwing around with the, the first filter. Like that's just all kinds of weird that we're getting in there. Uh, let's see if we can make it sound more interesting. There's this motion sequencer that's, um, you know, I'm going to keep with my goal here of making all of the weird evolving sounds fit within a rhythmic structure. And this is a 16 step sequencer here that we can draw in and add patterns to. So we can say like, well, okay, like every um, four, maybe do a peak here. Right now, this isn't actually pointed at anything, so let's point it at uh, the uh, re filter one's resonance. Because right now, there's it's actually at a negative. Uh, uh, okay, that, it's a little too much weirdness in those peaks. Let's try uh, more moderate peaks here. Got some technical difficulties, we're back. Uh, So I think that this filter amount that we're pushing the, uh, with the LFO is a little too much. It's, like I think the idea was good, but uh, we're just doing it too aggressively there. got going on there but we don't have enough low oh, I'm gonna do it I'm gonna push this I'm not going to push it any further than that. I actually wonder if I should pull this one down now. No, that actually does sound really good there. Alright. 
Yeah. Okay, that's a whole lot of grit that we've got going now. Just wanted to hear what that was sounding like. It was not good. Uh, we don't want to totally max that out. Um, that demonstration of the resonance is not as dramatic as I was expecting it to be. Um, let me try... Like, we're, we're hitting that... And we're, you notice we're getting different zooms. Oh, you know what? This actually might be better, uh, kind of offbeat. So, zoom, zoom. Uh, let me try now screwing around with the randomness, which affects the the intensity up to this maximum, I think. I'm pretty sure. Mm, kind of interesting. All right, I'm going to try screwing with this now. So as soon as I started pushing the resonance on this, we start to get into that really weird territory from the uh, motion sequencer. Like it sounds like somebody is just randomly stabbing a 303, and crying out in pain. Now we're, we're kind of in like a guitar amplifier. <laughs> The stabs are too high. Oh, whoa. <laughs> uh, these stabs are a little too high. Let's, let's bring them down a bit. Okay. That's not necessarily where I'm going with this, but you hear what I'm talking about, how we've, we've got that stabby weirdness of the resonance coming in rhythmically and that's so cool when everything else is being modulated rhythmically with these LFOs um, I'm I'm really enjoying that way that's um, evolving and changing like over the course of four bars this very simple pattern changes dramatically like, that's that's amazing we could possibly get even more dramatic results by pushing this oscillator three level Now when it's hitting that peak, it's completely mixing out, or just about mixing out, the first two oscillators, and it's just going into that growly low sub bass. I feel like that effect is, like, that transition is a little too dramatic. It sounds good, though. Let's try this, but with a, you know, maybe we'll screw around with the attack and... I'm trying to think of some way to make this transition... a little smoother.
Like right now we're hitting the, the Max Oscillator 3, which is when this should be shining, because this is when this envelope is really like trying to keep that calm as the LFO is pushing it way up. Sure to hit something interesting there. Like a lot of this is just dicking around with it and trying to find the weird sounds that you like. But okay, I, I set out to make an analog sound and I got very distracted making weird noises instead. Um Let's see if I can bring this back down to earth here. I'm taking out the resonance on filter two. So remember filter two is following that same LFO that's on. Uh... Oh, you know what? This actually gives me an idea. Okay, we're putting this one back to where it was. All right, that sounds good. Let's. Let's try throwing filter one cut off through the, or with the LFO throwing this all around now. So now, I, I really wish that this would animate what it's doing because uh, now I've got to try to describe it to you. The, <laughs> the filter as is starts off with a, a fairly aggressive little residence peak here, and it's way down here on the frequency spectrum. And the LFO is now pushing this up by 25%. And the envelope's pushing it up by 20%. So it's doing this zoom, 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 as well as zoom. <laughs> Actually, not quite that much, but uh, it's, a, it's doing a really slow zoom. And at the same time, we've got the motion sequencer now just spiking up that resonance. We can make those peaks more pronounced by having dips. Again, I'm trying to make it kind of rhythmic. Oh yeah, that I actually like that. I cleaned it up a bit. This isn't sounding great, but I want to show you this LFO right now, because this is doing so much. Listen to it and keep this pattern in mind. So right now we're in oscillator 3 territory, and now we're in mixed into oscillator 1 and 2. And now we're listening to how this resonance when it's getting jacked up is affecting that. I think the amount is a little bit too high. Yeah, by pumping that down a bit, it, it's less goofy. I'm really liking this now. I tried increasing the randomness to get just a little bit more variation instead of just doing this zoop dot zoop. It's more like a punchy on the beat. I'm really liking that. Oh my god. Uh, I'm trying to decide if I want to screw with this anymore. Like, it does sound really good when we get up in the higher frequencies here. I'm trying to decide how do we want to push into that, because it sounds great down here, too. 
Alright, do we use the envelope here? No. Because the envelope's doing a pretty good job. Like, if I reverse it, you can definitely hear what it's doing. Like, it's doing a really good job in this 20 to 25 range. Alright, yeah, I'm gonna leave that as is. Uh, I could try increasing this. this. I think it's gonna be... It's definitely gonna get us higher, but it's also gonna take us way too low, so I'm gonna have to tweak it. Like, that's taking us way too low now. Now it's starting to take us too high, so let me pull that back. I, I'm really tempted to keep screwing around with this pre-drive here. Nah, it's just too fuzzy. Alright, I just realized that I've been at this for like over half an hour now, and uh, <laughs> I should probably stop the video. Uh, it, it's been a lot of fun. Like, this isn't where I intended to go. I intended on making it more analog sounding, and this is... This is a little analog. It's had some of the analog character, but it's got... It's a, it's a crazy kind of hybrid sound, I think. Um, but it... It's been a lot of fun making this. I hope you've had fun watching this. Uh, thank you very much to all my Patreon patrons for making these videos possible. Take it easy, folks.